So I'm gonna show you guys how to do a pencil case. Pencil case is the, basically the same as a coin um, bag, coin purse too, it's just a smaller version of it. Um, so this will work the same for both. Uh, these get really fuzzy, um, and any time this white polyester like a mouse pad, it's always good to uh, use the lint roller on it to get all those little fuzzies off. And you'll notice for the pencil case, I gave it a lot of bleed. And so you'll see that in the design that we're really asking you to give it a good amount of bleed because it's really hard to line it up um, if you have it too close to the actual size. And when we put it in the press, it squishes it and it all kind of makes it even bigger. And so the more bleed we have, the happier you're gonna be with your design because you'll get it to cover the full um, sublimation area. So before I kind of line it up and get it where I want it, I'm gonna do a pre-press over here on the heat press. And a pre-press is pressing the substrate, the item that you're doing without your design. So when we do the pencil cases, we're gonna open the zipper a little bit so that the zipper can hang off and we're gonna line it up in the press so that the zipper is really right at the edge of the base of the press. We don't want it in the center and we don't want it too far off, um, but we're gonna do this just so we don't crush that zipper when we go down. I'm gonna put the Teflon sheet over it. And we're gonna pre-press it for 10 seconds. I'm just gonna count in my head. And the pre-press prepares the product and the material for the ink. And so it warms it up and it makes it take the ink better and uh, the color looks better. So now I'm gonna come back over here to my design to line it up and get it ready for the press. So I want my polar bear here to be on the bottom. And so I'm gonna kind of line it up so that it's gonna hit in that area, no matter how squished down it gets. I want that, that guy down there. And this tape is not gonna, this, the heat tape isn't super strong with this heavy of a material. So um, you can't really trust it to hold it, hold it, but it's gonna help you keep it in place while you put it into the press. So I'm just gonna kind of tack it down and try to kind of squish it as I do it. And the way it prints it to the side here, it's not giving me really room to tape. So I'm just gonna do this to help hold it in place. And then I'm gonna take it back to my press I'm gonna carefully flip it. So you see how I'm kind of holding it down there so it doesn't really move. I'm gonna to try to carefully flip it, keep everything in place, and get it lined up again here so that my paper is on the top, my zipper's right on the edge. The most of the time we see mistakes is because the zipper's too far off and the heat doesn't get to the whole design here. So I've got it right on that edge. I'm hoping it hasn't moved. I'm going to put my Teflon sheet on top. And this gets pressed for 60 to 90 seconds. You go anywhere in that in between. I'm going to clear this and hit start. And just keep an eye on my timer for about a minute, minute and a half. So we're at about a minute 15, so I'm gonna go ahead and lift my press and turn off my timer. Everything's gonna be very hot, so be careful. And it's probably gonna pop right off there. Get it off the press. And we got a nice full bleed. We got one little tiny corner poking out here, but that's pretty, that's pretty good. You probably won't see that. It might just be the seam, or actually it looks like it's coming on sewn there. So we got a nice full bleed. The colors are rich. This will be very hot, so make sure you let it cool off. Toss that in the garbage, and you're ready to go.